Central Heart to Heart. It's a rainy day and I thought I would sit in my greenhouse. Are you like me? Do you love the sound of rain? There's something so soothing about the sound of rain. People try to mimic the sound and you can play all kinds of background music and sounds and nature sounds to help you sleep at night. But there's nothing quite like the real sound of rain. Today's Heart to Heart, I'm going to share with you a little bit more about my weight loss. And I'm going to share with you a very vulnerable part of my weight loss. And this was something that's been on my heart for a long time, but I wasn't sure how I wanted to share it. Because it is a very intimate part. A lot of people have asked me, how can I lose weight when I'm not on any diet? And I'm not on any different regimen, so to speak, but I'm on a different path than what I was. And I lost quite a bit of weight, and I wanted to share with you my journey. Because I didn't share too much about this part of it. I lost weight because I stopped emotionally eating. A lot of us do that. A lot of us will eat too much because we eat for emotional reasons. We will overeat because of our emotions. A lot of times we can eat because we're happy, but most times we overeat because we're stressed or we're sad. And I stopped doing that over six months ago. Six months ago I had a video where I was crying. I looked really bad. I'll share that video at the end of this one. I'm sure most of you have seen it. Because I had a health scare because I felt so dizzy because I was so sick. And I was sick because of my emotions. Because I allowed my emotions to take over my life. And it's called emotional eating. A lot of times when we're stressed or we're sad or there's things that's going on in our lives, we will eat. We will eat to try to compensate from all the sadness. It's a little bit like an alcoholic. An alcoholic will drink to try to forget about their problems. A person will take drugs to try to numb the problems that they are having. It's no different than when you overeat. You're overeating to compensate, to numb yourself from situations in your life that you feel are too hard. A lot of you have remarked about my videos and how there's a lightness to me, a happiness to me, and I am so very happy. I conquered a big thing in my life and it was because of people that were unkind to me that helped me conquer this big issue in my life. So I'm going to be taking something very negative and I'm twisting it around and I'm going to make it positive because that's what happened to my life. I can't share with you what all happened without sharing with you this one part. So I'm not going to give them glorification. I am not going to boost them or give them attention. But I can't share my story without sharing a little bit part of the unkind and unhappy part of it. <laughs> I tried. I laid in bed last night and thought, okay, how can I share this part of my life without sharing that part of it? Because that part of it is something I really don't want to have in my life anymore. But for all of you, you can't understand it unless you know the whole story. I guess you're saying now, okay, Tessie, well, let's get on to the story, right? So yes, I am very happy. I have a lightness to me and I'm losing weight. Now, I don't know if I'm still losing a whole lot of weight. I'm down two sizes. Yeah, I'm down two sizes, which I was a 2X or 3X, and now I'm an X large to a large. My pants were um, 2X or 1X to X large. Now they're a large, so I'm a large. I'm still large, <laughs> but I lost a lot of weight. And most of it was because I stopped eating of the sadness and the hurt and the pain. It all goes back to about a year ago. It's been a year and one week that my mother passed away. And then, of course, it's soon going to be a year my daddy passed away. That time in my life, I was very vulnerable. And it was a time in my life where I just had a lot of sadness, of course. I mean, you can expect that. And over that same time, I stumbled across something that forever will change my life. And it has changed my life forever. But now I can look on it and say it's changed it in a positive way. I couldn't have said that six months ago. As a YouTuber, most YouTubers have some kind of, mm, let's say people that aren't very nice and they're critical. 
that's just a general when you're out in the public you know when you're working in the public that's how it is you just have people like that that's just how it is you have people like that so of course I don't expect to be any different and I knew of a place online a forum that was all critical like there was nothing nice about that there's there's nobody that's nice on that forum in my opinion because if you're on that forum and you're talking on that forum you're not talking nicely and it's it's against youtubers and not just me but hundreds of other youtubers really sweet kind youtubers like Megan Fox who's a Mennonite and all these other people <laughs> and I knew that it was there I mean I knew about it but I never really thought much about it and I knew that I was brought up once in a while on it and you know that's just how life is but I stumbled across a whole section about me and this was back uh, you gotta re I gotta remind you this was back in the winter time this isn't recent this was back in the winter time and I stumbled across this and I was at a vulnerable point in my life and that point in my life was for somehow I was drawn to reading about myself and it wasn't a good thing and I was reading all of these things now you gotta understand this isn't people that are critical about maybe a certain way of doing things even though that's part of it it is a harassment place it is a place that totally degrades people about their weight what they wear it degrades in every sense in every sense of the word it degrades them everything everything about them what they look like things they can't even help how they talk you know and I was I was fuel for the fodder so to speak <laughs> and because of my nature I it was just something that people a handful of people just loved to tear apart and when I found this at that point in my life and I just I don't know why do people live in a situation where they're being abused why do people live with verbal abuse I don't know I never lived with that but I accepted that into my life and I started reading it and my husband would say Tessie why are you there why are you reading that and I would say oh it doesn't bother me it doesn't bother me and I would keep reading it and slowly it affected me and so when I would read it I would sit and I would eat now I'm not blaming all of my problems on that because it wasn't my eating I would eat when I'm sad to begin with but that just pushed me over the edge and I would eat it eat it internally and eat the food and I would sit and I would eat it and slowly it was destroying my life and somehow I just wanted to read what they said about me and it was because I was hoping that somehow they would change their minds about me and that they would like me and I was always waiting for them to say oh wait we like her now I know it's so childish it's so stupid but that was how I was because I was emotionally eating this in and because of the loss of my parents chemically it did something to me it made me sad it, it, it really was stressful to me and then I had that aha moment and that was six months ago when I realized what was happening in my life and I had a conversation with the Lord now you guys know the Lord is my best friend I talked to him like he's sitting here right beside me and I said one day I said God I don't understand why do these people not like me even though come on nobody is liked by everybody and God said something to me so clear and distinct no it wasn't an audible voice but it was a voice internally and it was just a comfort to me and he said Tessie they hate you because they hate me and I realized that anybody who is on that and is talking on there and is engaging in that are people that aren't of the faith of me because you couldn't be that way because we are taught that we are to be kind loving we are to love our enemies we are to do good to those that are wrong to us so <clears throat> I knew in the Bible I knew that these people were not the kind of people that you should even even address and even remotely give them their time they sap your energy 
there is positive energy and there's negative energy and the negative energy will kill and destroy because it's not of God it's of Satan it is when you spend your life and you spend your time on being rude and, and unkind to people in such a way it is not of Christ and so I had a dream and this dream I never shared with anybody online because this is part of my journey and why am I sharing all this with all of you because maybe somebody is an emotional eater and maybe somebody is eating their emotions and I wanted to give them some hope out there that you can conquer it I'm living proof physically you can see I am living proof because I gave it all to God and I have not read or looked at that site for six months I have not when I promised God I turned my life around and I realized then and there the emotional eating whatever it is now you're not a youtuber a lot of you who watch this but maybe you have somebody who's tr given you trauma in your life as a child and you're emotionally eating to try to satisfy that it's never gonna satisfy you and it's only gonna make you worse physically and mentally and emotionally I had a dream and my dream was that I saw hell and I had a ladder and I was taking my ladder and I was dropping my ladder into hell and every day I was walking down that ladder and I was being there to see what was going on and then I would walk up the ladder take my ladder and walk home and God said to me right then and there that's what you're doing why in the world would you want to go to hell and see what's happening there and come out of that each day and that is how it is yes it's drastic talk I know but that is how it was for me and that is how it is depends on what you watch what are you watching what are you listening to what are you putting in your spirit think of it as if it's not positive it's negative it can't be both it's either positive or negative why are you choosing to go to hell every day to see what they're doing and I really thought about that because we can be so drawn up into gossip and criticism of people but it's not good it's not Christ like it's in the Bible it talks against that we are not to be like that and we are to try to find the good in everybody and it was such a pivotal moment in my life that I realized then and there that I don't want that why do I want that in my life and I started healing I started healing from the loss of my parents time heals wounds but wounds are always there and I always miss them and I always cry over them but yet time has healed that and I realized that when I was in that vulnerable state is when I allowed my guard down how many times are you stressed in a vulnerable state we need to think of our bodies and of our minds all the time and realize that when we're in a, a stressful situation we need to protect ourselves even more so when we're in a stressful situation we need to make sure we think of positive things and we focus on positive things I was asked last week why do I not talk about the times that we're living in more I have done a few things only because I feel it's important to share and show people how to do things you know when times are bad why don't I talk about politics why don't I talk about things that are happening in the world why am I burying my head in the sand I'm not doing that at all I know what's going on but for me I realize that I have to focus on my channel and my life on positive things and there are people that are coming to my channel who want to just escape from it we all know what's going on in the world we all know it but sometimes physically and emotionally and mentally we have to escape from it and too many people are being caught up in it that it's destroying their lives and my focus is to be a light in a dark world and I often said that well I can be in the dark world and be the light but yet it doesn't really work that way and I was wrong in that thinking I thought well I could go to places that are dark 
and try to be a light in those places. In the past, I've known there was people that had troubles with each other and I would try to step in and I would try to help them and make everybody happy with one another and loving, you know, and you just can't do that. And so back in the winter time, I tried to talk to these people at this place and tried to, to reason and you just can't do that. You just can't. You can't flirt with the enemy. You can't flirt with the enemy. And these are strong words. And this is a very strong message because sometimes I feel like I have to do this. This isn't a message that necessarily I'm happy to give. But sometimes we have to be set apart. We have to be set apart. We can be a light in a dark world. They can come to us if they're searching for that light. But we can't go to them. Sometimes we can't go to them. Because sometimes the more we go down into that ditch, the more we come up dirty. And I realized that it was destroying me because I was eating it then. And I was eating those emotions. And that's one of the big ways I lost weight. I'm not sitting and I'm not eating, thinking about what people are saying or not saying about me. Sometimes darkness needs to be left in the darkness. There's a lot of YouTubers that, are, that experienced what I have and they don't say anything because it's better to remain quiet. But for me, I believe it's important to share my life lessons with people. Whether you're watching me because you really want to learn about me and you want to you want to be enlightened about things that have happened in my life and you want to learn and you want to feel like you have someone that cares and understands or whether you're watching me because you wanted to see what the next thing I would say it doesn't matter to me sometimes I feel like God is asking me to do something I wrestled with this I'll be honest with you I didn't just jump out of bed and say yeah let's talk about this I wrestled with this for weeks and every time I thought I'm not going to talk about it. Something has happened to give me confidence to talk about it. I wasn't going to talk about it. Then last week I got a letter in the mail about somebody who said how my heart to hearts have really blessed them and how it's changed their lives. And I felt like that was God saying, come on, Tessie, you can do it. You got the strength. You can do it. And while I'm not really going to talk a lot about things of such a nature like this as I wasn't and I'm not I did feel like to lay this on my heart because there's so many of you sitting right now that were like me and that you were an emotional eater now your situations are much different than mine I'm sure but you're eating because emotionally you're trying to fill up a void fill up a sadness and I want you to know you can break free of that I have Literally, I broke free of it. I eat when I'm hungry, and when I'm hungry, I eat. I don't sit and eat bonbons and chocolate and cookies and cake and ice cream. I haven't had ice cream in six months because I'm not filling my life with that anymore. I've given it to God. And God is what can fill you and fill your hole in your life. And I'm not embarrassed to say that because when all the world has failed me in life, there is one who has never failed me, and that is my Lord, the father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of the Old Testament and New Testament, the God that's here today and was here yesterday and will be here tomorrow. Without the Lord, I am nothing. There's no way I could have survived the things that have gone through in my life. He has filled my hole in my heart. And I thank him for allowing me to go through this. I thank him for allowing me to find that website that day. And I thank him for bringing me out. He brought me out of the miry clay. He set my feet on a rock to stay. He set me on a rock on a strong foundation that cannot be broken. They can't. And I rejoice and I am happy. I am so exceedingly happy because God has taken me out of that. You don't believe me? Go back and watch my Sunday videos from six months ago. See the steps that followed. See the course that I have come. 
See the journey that I have been on. You can see it week by week, the small steps that have been taking place. And I'm not there yet. I'm still on this journey. But God has brought me there. He has. He has lifted me out of that pit. That pit that I was in. The pit that so many of us are in. He has lifted me out of there. Not overnight. You see, we expect things to happen immediately. We expect our life to change immediately. That's the world we live in. Get it now. But in God, things go on a path that takes you there. It's a steady path because as we go on that path, we are learning and we are embracing. So he didn't take it overnight, but slowly I was being taught on this journey and I was learning on this journey and he has taken me through it step by step. And I keep going on that journey. I keep going and I keep learning. And you all are helping me on the way. Don't lose your hope. Don't lose your hope. We have to take our cross and carry it. In the Bible it says, take up your cross and follow me. My cross may be different than your cross. Your cross may not be emotionally, may not be mentally, it may be physically. But God is telling us to take up our cross and follow him. I have changed what I watch. I have changed who I listen to. I have changed the, the channels I listen to and I subscribe to because I've taken up my cross and I'm learning to follow him. I give God the glory for it. Tessie didn't do anything. I didn't do anything except for I seeked the Lord and I asked him for wisdom and he showed me the way. You know, videos like this, not everybody will take and not everybody will take it in your heart and glean from it but there are some of you who do and I get the letters most of the letters that I get are letters about my heart to hearts and I really want to thank you for that because you have fed my soul you have fed me like I have fed you I couldn't do it without all of you because the Lord allows you into my life and in turn I have to speak words that I feel that God is telling me to speak it's not easy it's it's not easy let me tell you it is the hardest thing to do is to speak on these type of subjects and I had a lady that said to me last week too and she's like well I don't really care for your Sunday videos <laughs> for five years I've had one video a week where I shared my heart the title says about sharing my heart this isn't for everyone and I, I understand that and I totally agree this isn't for everyone but for those that it's for, I'm here for them. It's not the quantity, it's the quality. And I know that there is a group of people who need this to be fed with the things that I teach and I share. Because I teach from the heart. I really want to thank you guys so much for watching. And I can't wait to see you guys tomorrow. And thank you so much for your encouragement. If you're an emotional eater, just know there is hope at the end of that long tunnel. And God loves you just the way you are. Did you know that God can't make a mistake? God makes no mistakes. God made you. And you're not a mistake. He loves you. I love you. And I hope that you can find freedom from eating all of the pain that you are suffering from. There is hope. It's small steps, my friends. Take care, everyone, and we'll see you guys tomorrow.